Hi, it's Katrina. From the search for the very first dinosaur to trying to discover what they sound like, here are nine dinosaur mysteries we all want solved. Number nine, the first dinosaur. We have a pretty good idea of how far dinosaurs go back, but what we don't know is when it all started for these guys. What was the first dinosaur? The information we have is changing all the time. Until relatively recently, it was believed to be the Eoraptor, found in a rock in Argentina estimated to be about 231 million years old. But then in 2012, a fossil found in the 1930s in Tanzania was evaluated and it turns out that it was millions of years older than the previous record holder. Called the Nyasasaurus perringtoni, the 243 million year old fossils aren't a complete skeleton. In fact, it's parts of different Nyasasauruses. It is either the oldest known dinosaur or the closest known relative. So far, it is hard to say, but Smithsonian Magazine reports that paleontologists from the University of Washington have placed it at the beginning of the dinosaur family tree, and they began to thrive after a catastrophic mass extinction. The world's oldest known dinosaur was an herbivore and is part of the group known as Dinosauriforms, where the dinos all seem to have evolved from. Nyasasaurus dates back to the mid-Triassic period, 247 to 237 million years ago, which was a time when dinosaurs took second place to crocodile-like monsters called archosaurs. Number 8. Hot or Cold-Blooded You might be forgiven for believing that dinosaurs are cold-blooded creatures. We associate them with reptiles and lizards, meaning that they depend on the environment to regulate their body temperature. Scientists assumed that if this were the case, dinosaurs would have been slow, lumbering creatures. However, this topic has been up for debate for quite a while, so scientists decided to put it to rest once and for all. In 2015, researchers studied the growth rings on fossilized dinosaur bones. If you compare them to mammals, the results show they grew just as fast, indicating that they were warm-blooded. Warm-blooded dinosaurs could have controlled their own body temperature and had a quicker metabolism, making them much faster. Other scientists completely disagree with the study's conclusions, and based on their findings, believe that growth rates demonstrated that dinosaurs were actually mesotherms, neither cold-blooded or warm-blooded, but somewhere in the middle. The more research, the closer we are to finding out the answer and figuring out how dinosaurs lived. In the meantime, the debate continues. Number 7. The Biggest Dinosaur Since dinosaur fossils are so old and usually found in pieces, it isn't easy to gather information and put the pieces together. When it comes to determining the biggest dinosaurs, it's a tiny bit complicated. The heaviest dinosaur is believed to be the Argentinosaurus, a type of titanosaur which include the largest land animals known to have existed. Anything with Titan has to be huge, right? Titanosaurs were gigantic herbivores that lived at the end of the late Cretaceous period, 145 to 66 million years ago. Titanosaurs were the last surviving group of long-necked sauropods, but what's confusing is that they evolved a few times, so there isn't a straight line for archaeologists to investigate. In 2014, paleontologists unearthed what they claimed to be the largest animal to ever walk the Earth, at least out of the ones that have been found so far. Argentinosaurus hunculensis was estimated to be 40 meters long and 20 meters tall. Estimates of its weight range from 77 tons to 110 tons. The problem is that these estimates come from a small number of bones. Another contender is the Patago Titan. Paleontologists discovered six complete skeletons and calculated its weight at 69 tons. But as always, the debate continues and paleontologists are racing to find more fossils. And now for number six. But first, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what topics you'd like to see in the next videos. Number six, what did they sound like? When we think of dinosaur noises, the sound of roaring usually comes to mind because that's what we've seen in movies. When you picture a dinosaur, it's running around and roaring like a lion. Paleontologists have taken a closer look at dinosaur skulls and at the evolution of the voice box. The closest living descendants we have to dinosaurs are birds and crocodiles. The team led by Julia Clark, a paleontologist at the University of Texas at Austin, found a fossil of a Vigavis ei, the ancestor of the duck and goose. This fossil has the oldest known representation of a voice box ever discovered, and from there the team figured out what kinds of sounds its anatomy could make. Many dinosaurs probably cooed or honked. But if you're thinking dinosaurs have lost their ability to be scary, don't worry. Last year, the BBC made a documentary that explored the T-Rex and what it may have sounded like. 
Using the combined noises of a Chinese crocodile and a Eurasian bittern bird, an estimate of the T-Rex voice was made that was described as a sinister rumbling. So, instead of being a roaring beastie, one of the most famous dinosaurs in the world could have been a more subtle and, by our reckoning, scarier predator than first thought. Certainly better to imagine than a big squawking thing with feathers. Bet we'd all still run away from it though, cluck or no cluck. Number 5. Dino Accessories There is an ongoing debate over whether dinosaurs had feathers or not. Recent evidence has been found to suggest that they were. But besides all that, everyone is also wondering why they have so many things attached to their heads and their bodies. Horns, spikes, frills, crests. There were some good-looking dinos roaming around there back in the day. As for what these things were used for, as you can guess, there is much speculation. Some experts think they evolved so dinosaurs could regulate their body temperature, or they were used for defense, which you can definitely imagine in the case of horns or spines. Another thing they could have been used for is social interaction. Just like modern-day animals, dinosaurs may have also used their crests and frills to communicate and attract a mate by looking puffed up and attractive. In 2008, there was a study of duck-billed Lambiosaurus that had these prominent head caps. Researchers established that the caps were connected to the dinosaur's nasal passages, suggesting they produced sounds to frighten off opponents. Kind of like having your own built-in megaphone on top of your noggin. Pretty effective. Number 4. Were they pack hunters? As seen in Jurassic Park, one of the scariest things about velociraptors is the way they hunted in packs. It looks and sounds freaky, but is this detail just a fictional embellishment? There is evidence that dinosaurs walked alongside each other as seen by their fossilized footprints. But for all we know, they were chillin' rather than hunting. A key example of possible pack hunting activity was found in Montana in 1969. The remains of raptor-like dinos called Deinonychus were discovered together with the skeletal remnants of a much larger dino called Tenontosaurus. This indicated the big beast had been ambushed. Appearances can be deceptive, though. Who's to say the Deinonychus weren't simply fighting over a carcass? One major thing to remember about studying dinosaurs is that their skeletons are rarely complete, which makes them a challenging jigsaw puzzle for archaeologists. Experts simply can't decide if they were pack animals or not. Of course, it depends on the species and the circumstances. Number 3. Dinosaur Colors What color were dinosaurs? When we recreate them, we have to use our imaginations because the remains we have found are so old. The old image of green and brown dinos with reptilian skin has kind of gone out the window as experts focus on the idea of bird-like feathers and plumage. Until this year, the thought of working out the exact color of dinosaurs was thought to be almost impossible unless we had a time machine. However, it's now believed accurate coloring has been spotted thanks to, of all things, a historic letter from 1833. Written by a fossil collector to a naturalist, it contains a drawing of an ichthyosaurus skull made using natural ink from the same place the skull was discovered. Where did they find perfectly preserved ink? Inside the fossilized body of an ancient squid, of course. If colorful ink can last 200 million years, then experts might have a shot at cracking the dinosaur color code. But how? Modern technology has allowed dino hunters to study what are known as melanosomes, or cell components which contain organic evidence of color. The Anchiornis, found in 2009, was originally thought to have feathers the color of carbon. With this new technique, they've been found to actually be a combo of black, white, and striking red. Seems dinos could have been all the colors of the rainbow. Cool, huh? Number 2. Learning to fly The remains of dinosaurs like the pterodactyl show that some of these ancient creatures had wings and were able to fly. How they actually did this is open to speculation. Birds reportedly let their young fall out of the tree a few times to get their wings flapping, and it could have happened that way for dinos. Or they could have learned by taking off from ground level. It's a prehistoric mystery. A couple of years back, parrots were studied in relation to dinosaurs in flight. Because parrots hopped from branch to branch, it was thought maybe that's what baby dinosaurs did. The bigger the gap between branches, the greater the instinct to flap and keep themselves from plunging earthwards. It was certainly an interesting theory. If you want to hear something crazy, check out what happened this year when wings were attached to an ostrich to further the cause of dino flight research. A poor ostrich was temporarily modified in the name of science in order to see if it tried to take off while running along. They picked an ostrich because of the creature they were investigating, Caudipteryx, which had some similarities to the famous bird. By doing this, they wanted to see whether dinosaurs took off from the ground when first learning to fly. And where better to start than a flightless bird? The results were very, well, floppy. This gave experts the clearest idea yet about how flight came about in dinosaurs. Number 1. Is Jurassic Park possible? 
Dinosaurs were well and truly thrown back into the public eye when Jurassic Park was released in 1993, directed by Steven Spielberg and based on the novel by Michael Crichton. In case, for some reason, you haven't seen this classic monster romp, it involves the cloning of dinos from blood found in ancient mosquitoes preserved in amber. Is Jurassic Park something that could happen in real life? The short answer is nope. DNA has a reported shelf life of a few thousand years, maybe a little longer in perfect conditions, but it wouldn't be around millions of years later, amber or no amber. Amber is a great preserver of a body's exterior, but it doesn't stop the organs inside from rotting away. Having said that, some believe you could conceivably find traces of soft tissue and from that, usable blood. One detail that's easy to forget about with Jurassic Park is the creative license taken with the cloning procedure. The park scientists plugged the gaps in the DNA with material from frogs. One tiny problem, these are amphibians and don't have as close a connection to dinos as species like birds or crocodiles. Plus, fragments of DNA wouldn't work. You need a complete string of DNA, otherwise you wouldn't know what parts were missing from your Build a Dino project. So for now, we are all safe. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and let me know what topics you would like to see covered in the next videos. See you soon. Bye.